Hi, I'm Teresa Hansen, Chief Editor of Power Grid International Magazine, and I'm here at ABB's Automation and Power World in Houston, Texas, and I've been speaking to some of the ABB folks this week, and right now I have with me Doug Voda, who is a Smart Grid segment leader, and we're going to talk about Smart Grid at any budget. Hi, Doug. Thanks for joining me. Thanks, Teresa. Thanks for seeing me again. Sure. Um, I know that I've been talking to a lot of people and obviously there's a lot of new technology out there that utilities can implement to make a smarter grid or to uh, realize the smart grid. Um, but I also know that there's a lot of things maybe that they can do that aren't going to cost them so much. I guess it's uh, kind of an any budget goes. So can you just talk a little bit about that? The answer to that is yes. What uh, we've learned over the past couple of years is that you can have budgets uh, of under $100,000 that are smart grid related and do deployments that have uh, measurable benefits. And so uh, there should be multiple reasons to begin searching, uh, selecting and deploying uh, specific applications that bring value to the utility in smart grid. And the, the magnitude of the programs can be very small or huge. So there's all kinds of benefits at multiple levels of investment. Okay. Well, can you tell me what are some of the biggest obstacles that utilities are facing when they're trying to green light a new smart grid application such as volt bar control or maybe a self-healing grid? One of the most difficult parts that uh, we see is the difficulty that utilities are having in the justification of both the social and the technical justifications. And I'll explain that in a little bit more detail. Uh, we're very accustomed to doing financial models that you can use that give a asset life extension or lower operating and maintenance costs or improved reliability. The social factors are not so easily measurable. So what we've done is step back and work with customers to identify the ones that have more benefit that's quantifiable uh, with uh, what I would say is more classic justification techniques uh, at smaller scales in order to be able to start the programs, then look and recognize the social benefits and then work with their utility commissions to identify what value they'll place on those and then that can lead to even larger programs. Okay, can you explain a little bit about social value? I mean, you're talking about value to the utility's customers? Yes, so and a about that? very good question. An example is, if a customer has an outage, what, what cost does the customer experience? There are utility companies that will place a value as an example of $25 on a per customer basis on an outage. There are other utility companies that put no value to the uh, cost of a customer outage. Okay. okay, that makes sense. Okay. Well, how can equipment manufacturers assist utilities in the process of building a successful business case? We have, um, within our organization, worked with many consultants, several consultants, uh, that are doing this exact thing, the, that develop the financial models, the parameters, the uh, cost-benefit analysis, the social factors and the technical factors leading to the justification and ha having um, interacted with many of them and learned from them how to how they are putting the models together for several of the largest IOUs. We've taken that information and we've created uh, some spreadsheets where we can interact with customers and talk with them about uh, specific smart grid applications that they can begin to deploy or at least pilot and uh, see if they're seeing the same measured benefit uh, that we uh, received from the other utility customers that we're working with. So it's good if manufacturers get involved early on. Absolutely, and Teresa, it goes all the way back to the point where if uh, some of them have run a what we call a capability maturity model index or establish some form of a roadmap or a vision, we really like to be with them at that point because uh, we can uh, provide some input to them in uh, both the roadmaps and the order of the priorities of the activities as well as the financial justification for the activities. Okay, so can you describe some of the various justification measure, measures um, that have been successful for early adopters of some of this technology? Yes. And as an example for fault detection isolation restoration, uh, many utilities overlook the fact that if you can um, reduce the duration and the a quantity of faults 
as far as the magnitude of the fault and the duration of the faults, that you extend the life of the distribution transformers, you improve the breakers' uh, life. So these are factors that uh, we have, the calculation models in place, to be able to use that information along with the social benefits uh, plus the uh, lost revenue that uh, exists when you are not uh, delivering power. And so with that, that combination of parameters, uh, we found ways to, uh, to uh, what we call a realistic justification um, that helps them in their interaction with the uh, uh, utility commissions uh, that they are uh, or, uh, associated with. And uh, because of that, uh, they're able to uh, accelerate their uh, justification or denial and then get to the next program that, uh, that they can find uh, to, uh, uh, to find the benefits and receive approval from the Utility Commission and uh, what the rate structures would be. Okay, okay. So, um, are there any lessons learned? I mean, up to this point, some of the utilities you've worked with, have you, are there any lessons learned that yes. you maybe can share with us? Yes. The, what we found is, is that there's uh, probably four or five um, smart grid applications that have been analyzed and justified multiple times. And so they include uh, volt VAR optimization, conservation voltage reduction, fault detection, isolation, restoration, and asset health and management. And those categories have quite a bit of financial models around those. And so uh, that, uh, those elements of smart grid appear to be uh, gelling to be uh, more consistent and more common in the justification process of utility companies. Okay, great. Well, thank you very much, Doug. Thank you very much, Teresa. It's always nice to see you. You too.